onto the computer here. So we are we are recording. Um, uh, so again, this um, this workshop is about um, the Zoom Moodle integration that we've worked with CTS to um, to add into uh, our Moodle system and. Yeah, you know, it fundamentally it doesn't do anything that you couldn't do individually in Zoom, but it has some um, there's some nice things about it that I want to point out. Uh, I have in the chat uh, entered in the Bitly link for the um, for the workshop notes we're going to be using today. Again, there's not a lot of uh, detailed notes here, so you may or may not want to um, to um, you know have these notes for posterity. But what I want to do today is really just talk a little bit about this uh, Zoom activity in Moodle. Um, you know, Zoom, of course, is a third-party application, and we have integrated a lot of, of our third-party uh, um, applications into Moodle using the external tool activity. I've done the same thing with Zoom. So like VoiceThread, if you use VoiceThread, that's an external tool as well. Um, the external tool for Zoom is pretty straightforward and pretty simple. It basically, uh, you add you add the activity to your your Moodle course once, and it provides you and your students a link into your Zoom dashboards. Uh, from the perspective of the course that you've added it into, and I'll show you what that means as as we look at this, gives you a way to schedule and launch Zoom sessions. It gives you a secure way to share those sessions with your students because you know you they're going to be listed within your Moodle course. No need to you know email out uh, Zoom links and uh, meeting IDs and and passwords and all that. It's just uh, your students are in your Moodle course. You're in your Moodle course. Uh, you will have a place to access your sessions. You can launch them. Students can join them. Uh, and it's, you know, I, I think it's nice because it kind of um, organizes your Zoom sessions by class. So uh, before we get started, just a comment about Zoom accounts. Uh, of course, um, just a minute. So um, uh, CTS has set up single sign-ons for the uh, Zoom accounts that are in the purchase.zoom.com um, uh, domain. So if you haven't um, set up your single sign-on yet, uh, you'll want to do that. I've linked here uh, the, the news story that CTS has published about the single sign-on instructions. And so, um, you know, it, it'll walk you through how to uh, consolidate your, um, your Zoom account into the single sign-on domain. The only issue that you might have is if your students had previously set up a Zoom account um, under their, using their purchase email then um, when they log into Zoom, they're going to be asked to consolidate that account into, um, into the um, purchase Zoom domain. And so they've got three logins to do that. They can ignore the request to consolidate their accounts twice, but after that, they either have to take their personal account and set up, set it up with a different email address, or um, 
they uh, will need to consolidate their personal uh, account into the Purchase College domain. So what I want to do uh, today is to quickly just show you what the instructor view of the Zoom integration looks like and then uh, how that is set up between different courses. Quickly show you what the student view is and then just walk you through the steps of setting up this uh, activity in your course. And, um, and that will be it. And there'll be time probably for questions and you know, if you wanna do some hands-on testing, uh, we can do that as well. So let me um, get here, so. Um, so uh, here's a, a course where I am logged in as the instructor. I have already added the Zoom activity. And let me again emphasize, you really only need, need to add one of these activities to your course, because essentially what it does is it uh, provides a connection from your course in Moodle to uh, a dashboard for your Zoom account that is pegged to your account and to the course you're coming in from. So if you had three or four or five of these activities in your one course, they'd all do the same thing. They would just take you to your dashboard. So if I um, am in my sandbox here and click on the link here, um, by default, it's set up to pop open your course focused Zoom dashboard in a new uh, browser tab where you can do pretty much the kind of things that you would normally do for uh, Zoom if you were going directly to Zoom. So you could schedule a new meeting. Um, you could look at your upcoming meetings. You could look at your past meetings uh, from your list of upcoming meetings. You can start them, you can delete them. You can click on them to edit them. So if I schedule a new meeting for my Landa Sandbox 5 course. Uh, you know, you can call these whatever you want to call them. Set up the, the time, the, the duration, all of the typical kinds of settings. You can require a meeting password. Uh, you can enable waiting room. All of these things that you would normally have as Zoom settings if you were going to go into your Zoom, either into your Zoom application or log into your Zoom account um, on the web, you have the same kind of settings for, um, for setting up uh, a meeting. And if I click Save, then, um, and go back to the course meetings, I will see the meetings that I have set up in the sandbox uh, for this course listed chronologically. And um, so it's pretty straightforward. Um, the nice thing here is that if you've got three courses you're teaching, and you use the Zoom activity in multiple courses, by default, you're only going to see the courses that you've set up, the, the sessions that you've set up for this course when you're going into the dashboard from that course. Okay. If I click on all my Zoom meetings and recordings, you can see that I've actually set up more Zoom sessions. Um, through this Moodle Zoom interaction, but some of those sessions are for different courses. So, I mean, if you are setting up a lot of Zoom sessions and you've got multiple courses and you just log into your account on Zoom, you have a lot of Zoom sessions to, um, to work through to see what's coming up. But um, within this dashboard, course-related dashboard, you can see just specifically the courses that you are um, are setting up for the, the one particular course. So uh, if I close the dashboard down for my Landa Sandbox 5 and instead go into a different course where I've got the, dash, the Zoom activity set up and click on, um, click on that link, 
I'll again go into a Zoom dashboard, but this dashboard is focused on my fall 2020 sandbox course. And by default, only shows the sessions for that. Again, I can click on all my Zoom meetings and I will see the ones that I have set up for the other courses, or I can click on my course meetings and I'll go back to the dashboard where I'm only seeing the Zoom sessions for the course that I'm looking from. Okay, let me just check. Uh, dashboard overview, standard meeting settings. Uh, so again, if I wanted to um, edit any of the settings on this course, just as if I were doing this in um, by logging into my Zoom account on, on the web through the web browser. If I click on the link, I have uh, information about that session. I could copy the invita invitation just as I've done before, but actually I don't need to do that anymore because I don't need to, to, to share this link or any of the other information about the Zoom session to my students because they will access it in a different way. If I wanted to change any of these settings, I uh, click edit this meeting and I can go back in and maybe I want to mute my students when they come in. Okay. Uh, click save. Now that um, those settings have been changed and the students would be muted when they came in um, from their link. Um, oops, let me go back here. So, uh, I mean, just looking at this, um, let me ask if there are any questions about how this works from the instructor perspective. Yeah, so how do I get the Zoom into my course? Okay, well, let me show you, uh, let me show you what it looks like from a student perspective, and then I will go through the steps for adding this into your course. Okay. Any any other questions? So they uh, they access it from Moodle then, not from Zoom anymore. Right. So the advantage here is that you can set up your Zoom sessions through your Zoom dashboard that you access from your Moodle course. All of those sessions that you set up will be identified as coming from that particular course. And so you can just tell your students, you know, you don't have to worry about looking for an email or anything like that. Just go into our course, go into the Zoom dashboard, and you will see all of the sessions. So if I go back here, let me just set up uh, a couple of sessions for this um, sandbox course. Let me, uh, let me schedule a new meeting. Um, so maybe I'm, I mean, I'm doing an online course in the fall. I don't have a specific course meeting time, but maybe every week I want to have a Zoom session to allow my students to, uh, to check in. So I could say, you know, fall 2020 astrobiology week two, um, check in and uh, click on the little calendar here to go to, you know, the second week of the course, which is going to be the first week in September. Let's say we're, you know, Thursday evenings, we're having this um, check in time. Um, and I create that course. Now, if I look at the meetings I've got for the course, I've got, um, you know, this, the, these two meetings set up for the course so far. I'm going to switch over to a different browser um, where I'm in that same course, but I'm now logged in as a student member of the course. Oh, and one thing I, I can't do here in the workshop is if I, uh, you know, clicked on that course 
and um, I, I'm in one Zoom meeting, so I really can't start another Zoom meeting without kicking you all out of this one. So, uh, you know, this is the one thing I can't really demo in the workshop today. But, you know, if you were actually in Moodle, getting ready to start your session, you would, of course, just click start this meeting and it would launch Zoom um, into that into that session and uh, Zoom would log you in um, as you. So if I go in and uh, click on that same dashboard from a student's perspective, I will see uh, the upcoming meetings for the course. And as a student, I just have the ability to join. Now again, we're all, we're all in the middle of a Zoom session, so I can't actually pretend to be a student and click join here to go into the Zoom. But that's how easy it is for students once you use this Zoom dashboard in your Moodle course. You can go in from your perspective as the faculty member, set up all of the different meetings and uh, have them all listed there. And then when the students click on the Zoom dashboard, they will just see a chronological listing of all the upcoming meetings. And, um, you know, when it's time to join uh, the session, they can click join and, and come in. Once that uh, date and time passes, obviously it becomes a, a previous meeting and your list of upcoming meetings will just show the students what sessions are coming up. Question? Yep. Um, I use Zoom for office hours. Yep. And um, I at one point had a fixed time for the office hours and I had a waiting room and that worked that worked a little bit, but some people said they couldn't come to that one that that time of day or whatever. And so I set up something. I said, um, if you want an office hours, send me email, propose some times, I will send you an invitation. And that 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 felt to me like it worked better. I mean, people people did that opportunity. Um, how is there a way I could? So I don't want all the Zoom meetings to be there because some Zoom meetings are just for specific students. I mean, it wouldn't be horrible, I guess, since I have a waiting room. But um, yeah, I, how, do you, how do you propose? Is there a way of doing of doing something like what I did? No, the the Zoom activity in Moodle sets up a dashboard where everyone goes in and sees essentially the same dashboard space. You see it from the instructor perspective, students see it from the student perspective. If and you want to use all them. they they always see all the all the upcoming right yeah. So if you want to continue to also use Zoom for essentially private meetings with students or yeah personally scheduled meetings with students, you'd have to continue doing that the way you're doing it, Janine. Okay, okay. Yep. Okay, I know. So now I know that. Yep. Yeah. So uh, just to show you um, setting up the Zoom integration, obviously I need to pick another sandbox where I don't have this set up. Um, so let me just go into one of my other courses here. And um, if I turn editing on in this course, then um, you have the ability, of course, uh, whenever you've got editing turned on to, um, um, to add activities or resources. Let me put it up at the top of the page here. To add activities or resources to your course. So you've got uh, editing turned on, click add an activity or resource. And we have set up, I mean, this Zoom integration is really a form of external tool, but to make it simpler to use, we've pre-configured it and set it up as a separate activity. You can just go ahead and pick from the activity chooser. So, you know, starting with Z, it's going to be down here at the bottom of the list. You just uh, select it. It says, you know, it has a, a brief description here, schedule and run your Zoom sessions from within your Moodle course. And um, let me 
can't get down far enough to um, actually click OK. Here we go. Click Add. And um, you have all you really basically need to do is give this integration a name. I've been calling mine Zoom Dashboard because that's kind of self explanatory. And the one thing, um, uh, one other thing you might want to do is to turn off accepting grades from the tool so that this doesn't show up as an item in your gradebook. There's um, really not, uh, Zoom is really not passing grades back to Moodle. So there's no need for you to have that accept grades from the tool turned on. And um, if you turn it off, then you won't have this extraneous um, item showing up in your in your Moodle gradebook. Just click save and return to course. And and there it is. Now if I click on the Zoom dashboard here, again I go into um, into a Zoom dashboard, but again this is now focused on this geology sandbox. And so it's not listing any Zoom sessions because I'm not set up any Zoom sessions associated with my geology sandbox course. But again, if I click all my Zoom meetings and recordings, I will see the ones that I've set up for the other courses where I've added this Zoom dashboard, this Zoom integration. So as I was saying at the top of the, of the workshop here, uh, you know, I think it's a pretty straightforward uh, integration. It again, doesn't do anything that you couldn't do just by working directly with Zoom. But I think the advantages are, it gives you a way to organize your course related Zoom sessions by course and to be able to look at them and set them up by course. And it gives you a way um, for, um, um, providing access to your students in a secure way that um, doesn't require sending around a lot of, of uh, links to different Zoom sessions. Um, you know, again, it um, reduces the chance that someone else is going to surreptitiously find your Zoom sessions because these links are not being shared widely. You don't have to worry so much about Zoom bombing or the things like that. Um, so Marie, you've been following the chat. If, um, is there, are there any um, things that we need to address? Uh, yeah, one, one thing would be why would you set up multiple instances, uh, multiple meetings when, if, if could you use recurring meetings in here is a question in the chat. You could use recurring meetings um, just as you would with a regular um, uh, Zoom session. So if you're using the recurring meeting function uh, currently in Zoom, you can do the same thing here in, um, um, in the sessions that you set up in your Moodle dashboard uh, for your course-related Zoom sessions. Qu question, maybe I might not be understanding something. There's no association between, if I have my tabs by weeks, um, is there any association if I, put the, the, if I put the Zoom dashboard activity in a particular week, it wouldn't necessarily go to the Zoom session that I've set up for that week, is that? No, no. So again, if you had multiple Zoom activities in different weeks, they're all gonna to go to the same dashboard. Now, however, uh, we're still working with CTS on integrating this into the Moodle calendar. So we've set up uh, a token on our Moodle system that CTS has to install on their dashboard for their Zoom uh, domain. Once we get that worked out, when you set up the different sessions in your Moodle dashboard, 
those sessions will show up as um, as separate items on the Moodle calendar. Now that's not going to put them in the different weeks, but it's going to put them on the calendar. And if you use the um, say the calendar block or the upcoming events block in Moodle, then those Zoom sessions that you set up are going to be on your course calendar, on your Moodle calendar for that course, and they will show up in the upcoming events and, and students would be able to click on them. I was hoping that we would have that um, calendar integration ready for this afternoon, but I was uh, kind of delayed in getting the Moodle token back to CTS, so we're still working on getting that integration. But you no, know, so so Janine, there won't be you won't have Zoom activities in every week, but you know you would have those Zoom sessions showing up on the calendar in the upcoming events block and so forth. At this point, I am very glad I have just one course. The people who have two or three or four courses, I think will have a harder time. Because isn't it the case that their, stu their students will see multiple Zoom sessions, some of them that not theirs? No, no, no. So if we go back, if we go back to the student view, the student is only seeing the Zoom sessions that are related to the course that that they're accessing the dashboard from. They're not seeing the course sessions from my geology sandbox. They're not seeing the course sessions from my uh, Lambda 5 sandbox. They're only seeing the Zoom sessions that I've set up through the integration for this course. Okay. So that fall 2020 Anthro astrobiology sandbox, that was taken from the name of the Zoom course. But yep. the name, excuse me, the name of the Moodle course. Yep. Okay. Okay. Keith, a question about um, recording sessions from within Moodle and then how to provide those to students after the fact. So if you uh, look, there is an option for cloud recordings. I never use the cloud recordings in Zoom, especially if you're doing a lot of Zoom sessions for a class and you've, and, and as Janine said, if you've got three or four classes and you're doing lots of Zoom sessions for lots of classes, you're quickly going to fill up your cloud recording space. When you are in the Zoom session and you click record, just like uh, I did for this session here, I always select the option record to computer. Uh, so I record my Zoom sessions to my, my MacBook here or to the Mac Mini if I'm in the conference room uh, on campus. And then that saves that recording out as an MP4 file, you know, a video uh, file. The easiest way to share that back to your students is, um, well, what I do is, um, if I were doing this for, for course, for my classes, I would put this up onto my personal YouTube account. Uh, you have the option of putting it up as unlisted if you want, if you don't want you know, a lot of people to see it. Uh, if you put up on YouTube as unlisted, nobody can find it unless you give them the, um, the link to it. And so once it's a video on YouTube, even if it's unlisted, it can't be private, but it can be unlisted, then you can use that URL in Moodle. You can link to that uh, YouTube page in Moodle so add a, a label or a page or some other Moodle text where you link to the, to the YouTube page. Moodle will then embed that video um, onto the page that you've been editing uh, in Moodle. So your students don't have to go to YouTube. Uh, no one will find it on YouTube if you don't give them the link, but your students go back into your course and they click on the the page where you've got your Zoom sessions listed, or they click on the discussion forum where you have linked in that YouTube link, and they will see the recording of the session uh, embedded 
into the page that they're looking at in Moodle. Okay. So I was kind of hoping we would we would uh, not take much longer than half an hour, but are there other questions? Um, uh, yeah, sorry. sorry. Um, a little bit piggybacking on the um, office hours. Yep. If, if I schedule office hours for several classes at the same time, can, how can I do that? The, I use I, I did that last summer. No, I mean last semester. Right. Uh, and I used the you know the regular Zoom and I gave the link to everybody. Yeah. So if you wanted to set up a Zoom session where you were inviting students from multiple Moodle courses. Yes. Uh, I guess you'd have to bypass this particular approach. You yeah. could set up the the Zoom session the way you've done in the past. Okay. And then just provide that link through the three different Moodle courses that you're oh. inviting students in from. All right. Yeah. Okay. I don't know that you, there's any can I way. Can ask a quick question? Yeah. Uh, you're recording this session, right? I am recording. Okay. Are you going to, where are you going to post it? This is, since this is a, a TLTC workshop, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to save the recording down to um, my laptop and then I will upload it to the TLTC YouTube channel. And actually I'll make it public and then you can just share out the, the link to all of you once it's up. Okay, thank you. Yep. Keith, is there a, a thought to integrate uh, the fact that we know through Zoom who's attending with the attendance function in Moodle. Yeah, the the attendance function in Moodle is actually a separate third party plugin. So there's really no talking between the LTI integration for the Moodle third party application and the attendance activity. So um, yeah, I mean, how to manage and record attendance um, for your Zoom sessions. There are different approaches, you know, if you could have someone monitor the participants window and people sign in with their real names, you can do what I did today is have everyone, you know, um, pop their name into the chat. The chat's easily recorded so you can go look at it later, but you would have to then manually add the attendance uh, data into the attendance activity in, in Moodle. It's not going to be directly integrated with the, with the Zoom activity. I have two questions. So one question is, uh, are the students allowed to record it on their end or is there, is it still blocked? Uh, is that is a good question that I'm not sure I know the answer off the top of my head. I don't think, um, I think participants by default have to ask the host for okay. the permission to record. Click on recording here. Yeah, so if I click on recording here, it's asking me I need to ask you. Yeah, I, I, and I think, that's the, I think that's just the default across Zoom, okay. whether you're using the Moodle plugin or not. Okay, so then another question, um, the settings in Zoom, can I still change that? Because, well, there's, for example, the chat, uh, so student uh, to student, which I won't see. Um, and I don't like that. So I, I shut that off. So that is not possible. And I can still do that in the Zoom, which is connected with Moodle? Uh, you're, you're only going to have the settings available to you that we saw when, you were, when we were setting up. Well, I mean, once you start, uh, once you're in the Zoom session as host, you've got all the controls that you would have in a normal Zoom session. So... Yeah, so I usually did this uh, once I, I scheduled the meeting, I was not able to change that, but I was on my Zoom and then I went to setting and then I changed whatever I wanted to change. Right. So um, you, you're going to have a broader sweat, a suite of settings if you log into your Zoom account um, through the web browser than you're going to have through this LTI integration. But I think... Um, I mean, you have, you would have the ability to set up waiting room or not, uh, muted or not, password, all of those yeah. meeting related okay. settings. I'll check that. 
I have a quick other question. So with these rooms, so uh, in a course, if I want to put five students in one room, five in another, another room and so on, uh, I've never did that before, but I've heard that is a good way. And yeah. I can also meet, I can go to the rooms. Right. And, okay. So, so that's the breakout room function of Zoom itself. And you don't need to worry about setting that up in the Moodle integration and you don't set that up when you're setting up sessions in by logging into your Zoom account either. But um, you know, if you go, if you do log into your Zoom account and you uh, make sure that breakout rooms are enabled, when you go into a Zoom session through as a host through this Moodle integration, you're gonna you're gonna inherit whatever settings you've set on your Zoom account. So if you want to shut off the student to student chat, do that in your Zoom settings uh, on your online account. And then when you go set up sessions in Moodle and you start them as host, they're going to take the settings from your Zoom account. If you have enabled the ability to use break rooms and nonverbal feedback and polling and so forth, then when you start a Zoom session from your Moodle dashboard for a course, you're, you're going into the Zoom session, you have your full host capabilities, and you would see a breakout room option um, down at the bottom of the screen, just like where you see, you know, share screen or turn your microphone on and off, turn your webcam on and off. If you have enabled break rooms, there's, a, there's an option in the Zoom session, not in the Moodle setup for the Zoom session, where you can say, okay, I want to have uh, five breakout rooms. And I want to randomly distribute the students across those five rooms. Uh, I, I click breakout rooms. I set up those parameters. I hit go and Zoom will automatically uh, randomly assign students to the different breakout rooms. Yeah, so that's that's a Zoom session function which you would have available to you. Okay, so I you... guess I have to play around with. So if I want to have it, then I go to my regular Zoom account and change that. And if for the next one I don't want to have it, so I go back to the Zoom and. Uh, I would recommend you just log into your Zoom account, go to your settings, make sure breakout rooms is enabled, okay. and have it enabled for all of your sessions. You don't have to use it. Okay. But then it's there. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Question about breakout rooms. Yeah. Uh, do do I as host have to be have to? Can, I have two learning assistants. Can they go to the breakout rooms? Uh, if you have them in. So you're in your Zoom session, you've got your 24 students, you've got your two learning assistants. What I would recommend you do is you make your two learning assistants co-hosts. Okay. Then okay. you click on the breakout room tool. You set up the breakout rooms, you randomly distribute the students to the breakout rooms. Then you and your students, because you're all host or co-host, can go in and out of the breakout rooms to see how the conversations are going. Okay, okay, I, I get that. Um, I had talked, asked you before, I'd mentioned guest access. Could you explain um, what, how guest access would work with this? Um, I, I have guest access mainly for, um, for Irina <laughs> or, or Canaric or somebody else. I mean, other people to look, to look at how we, you know, our, our, our content. Um, right. So, I mean, if, if you added Irina to your course as a non-editing teacher or. I, I, I mean, what I can do now is I can say guest access and not think about it. I allow guest access and I only tell some people about it, but other people could sneak in. But what can guests do? Can guests, can guests click and go to the Zoom session? Um, I'd have to test that. I mean, if you wanted, uh, if you wanted to make sure that Arena had not only access to your course to look at 
the content to you know have collegial conversation about that but you wanted to make sure that she could also get into the zoom session best thing to do would be just to add her as a non-editing teacher to your course okay um I think, <laughs> sorry, Irina. <laughs> um, I think I don't particularly want you with the Zoom session. Okay. So I would, it would be nice if, if, if that didn't happen. Uh, if anybody uh, like I say, I, have, I haven't tested whether if someone is in your course as a yes. guest. I mean, the, the integration requires passing the um, username and email of the person so i my guess is that guests would not be able to uh even click on the even get into the moodle the zoom dashboard in moodle okay well that's okay i would be happy with that yeah okay. but uh, can you check and let me know uh yeah okay. or marie can we check on that yep we'll check that out yeah there's two there's two species of guests purchase guests and other guests yeah guests. but both will be in your course not as an authenticated not as a known user Correct. and so i doubt either one of them would be able to get through the lti integration into zoom okay okay, okay. Well, we're coming up on to the end of the scheduled time. Um, like I say, this is a pretty simple integration. It's pretty straightforward to use and add, add to your course and to use. It just, uh, I think the main thing it does is provide a uh, consolidated course focused access to sessions, so to Zoom sessions that you want to set up for your specific courses. So I'm going to, at this point, stop the recording.